Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talk about the moon shining community. I darened that right up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> With Pappy G. My name is Kathy Cool. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guest, Pappy G and Darren McRoy. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, y'all. Hey. Hey, oh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about moonshining, the community that's involved in that. And uh, we'll we'll get to that after the break. For right now, though, uh, Kathy said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, Kathy? Yes, and I know Steve can relate, probably relate to this. I'm pretty sure Darren can. I don't know about Pappy G's background, but professional appreciation days. Uh-huh. So in the dental community, there is a calendar that designates an entire week of appreciation for the dental assistants Uh and then an entire week for the hygienists. Okay. And then the front desk gets a day Mm -hmm. and then there's boss's day. And I just, it drives me up a wall. Is it because I'm old and I just think you go to work to go to work? Like what, how do you guys feel about professional appreciation days? Yeah. I, I hate them. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, and, and it's, you know, I, I was a sales guy, so there's no appreciation for, for us ever. No one's ever like, let's celebrate our sales people today. But I, I just think it's in, in general, in dumb, it's dumb. And hopefully you're doing those things every day. Uh, uh, but again, it's, it's your job, right? I, I don't, I don't know. You're supposed to be doing those things. I, um, the appreciation, isn't that your paycheck? I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I don't think in my grandfather's day, uh, you know, the, anybody was getting appreciated other than they had a job and, uh, that's it. But now we have to make sure everyone feels loved and, uh, is important and yeah, have their special days. So, yeah. And we I'm, do I'm, that, you know, we celebrate their work anniversaries with lunches. And if we know they've been working hard, we'll get frozen custard or pizzas or, you know, I feel like we do it throughout the year. Right. To make right. it a whole week. A whole week, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's our job. A week's a little much. Yeah. 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 What do you think, Pappy G? You're, uh, you're, you've got a professional job like that. In your industry, does anybody? Uh, yeah, we don't, yeah, anybody we don't do it by the week, but... Uh, the initials for the company I work for are SQ and we have a program called SQ rocks uh-huh. and all the pro the project managers or operations managers can turn in the name of people that work for them. But you know, if they go above and beyond and okay. uh, they'll get recognized in the company newsletter and get like a $50 gift card in, uh, you know, that I'm okay with yeah. most of the time. Right. But I'm kind of, you know, I'm old school, kind of the older fella. And I have that same mentality as you guys do that 
Not to say that Kathy's old, but <laughs> we throw that out there he says it. real quick. I'll say it <laughs> real quick. But uh, yeah, you know, your appreciation is the fact that uh, you still got a job and you're getting paid. Right. Right. Yeah. I agree. How about so, you, Darren? Uh, Darren, uh, Darren is like, we need to have, uh, yeah. Uh, I agree, but I'm going to play devil's advocate. because it Re- Retail fun. Worker Appreciation Day. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, Darren. Um, yeah, everyone bring bottles by the shop that I need to try. Um, yeah. The But to play devil's advocate, I because I, I, I agree. Like Honestly, it's too much. But I think like there's several jobs in this world that I've always thought that they don't get paid enough for doing it. Okay. And I think those jobs, it's more acceptable to have a week being like national people who clean out porter potties. <laughs> <laughs> Please, that's officers. exactly Did, where they, I thought you were going with. Do that. they have a Do they have a week for for national porter potty? I don't know, cleaners? but I'll work on it after this. Yeah. I'll, I'll get it going if we don't. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop you right there, to Congress. Oh. I have a very good friend who actually owns a septic tank cleaning business, and on the side, he rents out porta potty, and he right. is making an absolute fortune. Don't let oh, yeah. me tell you, oh, sure. they don't make no money. But that, is he is, is he a small enough company where he's doing it? He's actually involved in the shit cleanup and that, or is he the boss? He's the owner, and the money is good for him, and then he pays someone, you know, twelve dollars an hour to clean the shit. No, yeah. Oh. He's doing it himself. He and, he and his wife run the business and okay. do well, it themselves. You got, and you got to respect that. You know, if you're if you're willing to roll up your sleeves and get it uh, elbow deep in shit, uh, yeah, I guess uh, you deserve whatever they're paying you. I would say you know, uh, that's yeah. not that's not for me. Huh? I would have a hard time because it's going to happen. There's got to be something where you're going to have shit on you. Yep. I mean, even if you're taking the most precautions you can and all that, oh, there's, yeah. if you're working in the world of shit, you know, shit's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would have a hard time with that. Yeah. But one of the best circumstances of this that I've ever experienced. So back when I worked at the zoo, yes. um, they had elephant keeper appreciation day and hired them all chiropractors and like and gave them back massages because they have to pick up a, a bunch of heavy elephant poop. And they, they did it one time. It wasn't really known to the public. It was just something that we heard so about. Something they did. It was uh, through the grapevine. We heard about this. Oh, okay, uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, Elephant poop picker upper. I'd, I'd like to see that on a resume. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, but definitely uh, anything for a whole week seems like a bit much, right? I mean, yeah, anything for a whole week is a bit much, and I 100 percent agree that it's probably all overdone anyway. But it's like Valentine's Day. How many people actually care? Like, right. Right. People think they care. But they just put you in a bad spot. Like, if you're a business owner and, uh, you know, they have administrative professional day and there's an administrative assistant that you're, uh, you know, in your, in your company, uh, you know, if you're not taking care of that person in some way and doing something, are you an asshole then? I don't, I don't know. I, yep. I, I, I think I think that's I think that's kind of how it is, right? So you're forced yep. to do this stuff. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you're you're just an asshole. So you gotta you gotta do all this kind of stuff. So, uh, and this sounds terrible in the dental industry. You gotta you gotta if you're the dentist that uh, fund this, uh, you're you're you gotta fund a whole week's worth of and and when it's a week, you gotta pay for planning committees and all that kind of shit. It's not like you're just like. You're, you're paying people to, to plan what they're going to be doing, then the, the expense of doing it, then the downtime that when they're fucking around with all the stuff that they're doing for the week, I don't, whatever that is, cakes and parties and celebrations, uh, playing games, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a lot, right? So, yeah. weeks worth of activities. Oh, so, hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's just not my thing. I don't, I don't, know. I don't, I don't want to be recognized. I don't think other people need to be recognized, but uh, it is what it is. It is. People are going to do it. So, and I, I mean, at the same time, maybe it, it's a good thing in that uh, you, you do recognize because sometimes it's easy to forget and appreciate people too. So it's, it is important if you are an owner 
or a manager or whatever it is to do remember to tell people thank you and go above it when they're especially when they're going above and beyond if they're doing a good job just to besides just whatever's in place to in terms of reviews and stuff like that i think a good manager should be letting the person know what they think of them throughout the course of the year so i was gonna say wouldn't it mean more coming from somebody on a random tuesday rather than oh they were supposed to say this this week like right. it's like yeah. valentine's day everything's fake like if you're yeah. forcing people to say it. This is true. This is true. So the better approach would be working for a boss that just, uh, you know, whenever you're doing something really good, whatever it is, whether, whether it is a, a gift card or something like that, or just a thank you. Uh, I think all that stuff's good. A mixture of that. All of the above is, is the best way to do it. So there you go. On that note, it's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with KK this time. KK, what do you have? Well, I don't have any moonshine, but I have a bottle that looks like moonshine. And it's okay. Outlaw's birthday. Okay. Carol. This one is the bourbon. Did they just do bourbons or did they do a rye? Uh I'm not sure. I think I think it's always been bourbon on that one. Okay. Okay. Very squeaky, little bit of pop. Uh it's enough to certainly take the lead. It feels like it could be beat. Darren's next. I got some old Jet Brothers uh, finishing rum barrels. Okay. That's our lead. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't tell us. Nope. That was good. That was good. Heaven Hell. Heaven Hell. Here we go. Slide on the set. Mm. Nice. That's good enough to take the lead. That's good enough. I would have bet 50 bucks that was a screw top and you were about to mess it up, but uh, no, I guess I'm no. wrong. <laughs> uh, I, I tried to separate the squeak from the pop, and uh, I did an excellent job there. Excellent job. Enough to take the lead. Pappy G, your last but not least, what do you got, buddy? Well, of course, I'm still with the pop cases. Okay. Okay. Uh, not not, not no, no noise there that time, so I, uh, I win, gang. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Steve. Yeah, of course you win. This is rigged. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> which should be. All right, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking about Moonshine Community. We're going to we're going to be asking Pappy G questions. We'll get to that after the break. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of executive bourbon steward certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your executive bourbon steward certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your executive bourbon steward certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller in one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years, from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. I'm 
McNew, don't mix your grain and grapes. Not a good time. You're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to Bourbon Daily. Tonight, Pappy G is going to tell us everything he knows about moonshining. Yes, he is. He's, he's holding court right here. So, yeah. yeah. So, tell us a little bit. Uh, just give us an overview of the moonshining community, Pappy G. I know nothing. Okay. Well, it's a good show. It's a good and show. And the show's over. It's a good show. Yeah. That is the moonshine community as a whole. Okay. Yeah. If, if you're in, you're in. And if you're not, we know nothing. Okay. You uh, uh, you should come to Missouri where they allow you to do that. Uh, again, it's still against federal law, but the feds aren't cracking yes. out on anybody. Uh, the feds, they're not coming to get you if you're making, you know, you've got a, a you know, 50 gallon uh, still or something like that or whatever it is. They're not coming. People out say that, but I've got a good friend of mine right now that the ATS sent him up for 18 months. Okay. Uh, for, uh, what, you know, was he was in he Alabama? Selling? I, I don't know if you want to talk about it. Was was but was, were we talking about selling and distribution? Uh, I, I would assume so. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're make, not gonna. We yeah. don't make it just to have it set around. Right. Right. But not just for personal use. But huh? yeah, but there's also different ways no. to do that. If you just sell it in your own social circle. You've got friends and people that you maybe they work with if you have a regular job. Uh, you know, if you're selling it within your social circle, it's hard to get caught, I would think. But if the 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 more you're taking out to the public, uh, um, yeah, the more you're subjecting yourself to potential issues there, for sure. Because there's always someone who wants to tell. Someone yeah, always wants to tell. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't. When something it's doesn't always a rat. Right. I don't know why people care about many things. If something's like, is dangerous, that you? no. Right. Right, Not exactly. Yeah, if something's if something's a you know a danger. Yes, but tell on them. But uh, if something's not bothering you. I don't know. I, I don't. Know. There's worse things that can be done in the world than someone selling some moonshine. Jesus. Uh, yes, I, I agree. Yeah. But what, what what do you want to know from Happy G, Darren? If he'll tell, if he'll say. So um, we were talking about a festival earlier. What does that look like in the moonshining world? What do festivals look like? Or the festival. Anyway. They're, 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 they got a lot of festivals. Yeah. I was going to say, Steve says you travel Festivals. everywhere and you go. There's a lot of festivals we go to and people have opened up a lot about uh, being in the industry, so to speak. Right. Uh, about being moonshiners. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who claim they are that are not the uh the two tv shows uh moonshiners and then the master distiller show has brought moonshine into a limelight that nobody ever expected and um it's more accepted in the public people want to know you know and right the just the thought they want to hang out with the moonshiner, the outlaw, uh, you know, and it's uh, it's not a bad thing now. Right. You right. know, people don't look at it like you're doing something terrible. No. So you feel like those shows have brought a more positive light to the moonshining community? Or do you wish they would have just left you alone? It's a toss-up. Right. Um, I, I've, it has, it, it's been good. When, mm -hmm. Let me go that route <laughs> because, because of the publicity so far, it's been good. It has caused um, some legal issues for some folks who, you know, put too much information out there. Mm hmm. Myself yeah. included, uh, <laughs> when I well, and I haven't been arrested or anything, but uh, when we did the the Pop Casey's legal release, I was interviewed by the local paper, and within a few days, my wife Susan's out in the yard, and big black SUV goes by, and. Within five minutes of the SUV going by, I've got drones in the backyard flying over the property, mm -hmm. and 
Wow. You know, so there's things like that that, uh, you know, there's times like that when you stop and think, boy, you were really friggin' stupid for opening your mouth. But for the most part, you know, it's been accepted and it's been good for us. Um, it's obviously good for business. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, on the shows, and again, the shows aren't based in very much reality, but it's presented in kind of a fun caricature of uh, of of the people that uh, that do that. And uh, yeah, it it seems like it's very uh, warm and inviting, and and yeah, you want to go meet these people that you see on TV because they they seem like they're fun people. So uh, in reality, the old moonshining days were not anything you'd want to be involved in. Uh, uh, especially no. disputes and yeah, you know, the things handled internally versus uh, yeah, you, yeah, you got uh, problems with your fellow moonshiners back in the day. You you had to handle that yourself because you're breaking the law yourself. So, uh, right, you hear a lot of people talk nowadays about the moonshiners code. Mm. Well, I'm here to tell you, in all honesty, there is no moonshiners code. There are moonshiners that are good people that will reach out and do things for folks and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, th there was a point in time where it was a very cutthroat business. And, you know, you, there, the code then was, you know, stay out of each other's backyard. And if you don't, there's going to be serious repercussions. And, you know, and like you said, business was handled inside the, community if you want to call it that but yeah there was a lot of feuds and yeah and it created havoc for a while one thing that i've seen that's fairly consistent uh, yourself included here uh pappy g is the people that moonshine tend to be artistic in nature so that they they tend to do other things that are pretty cool too that's why it's so conducive to fairs and festivals and stuff like that uh, a lot of them build different things, whether it's small, you know, copper stills, or you do the moonshine paddles and stuff like that. There's just different things that that are unique and fun and creative too. That is conducive to a community that uh, people are interested in. Uh, I mean, I think that's that's an important part of it too. Yeah, and you know, anybody could be a scientific moonshiner and read and study and go out and do it but you've got to have some artistic talents along the way to create certain equipment to make it work the way you want it to put your own spin on it to get your own taste uh you know to make the liquor taste the way you want it to taste to make it different so it doesn't taste like you know so and so's down the road or something right right uh, you've got to have that artistic ability and then, you know, to be able to work with the copper and come up with ideas, like I said, to make things work without, I mean, nobody's going to get rich doing this by any means. So a lot of stuff that you need to do it, you make yourself Yep. versus going out and buying it. And it's hard to go. You can't go to Ace Hardware and buy a moonshine still. Right. Yeah. You know, if you want a corn grinder and you're not a large distillery, you're not going to spend three or $400 or $5,000 on a corn grinder. You're going to take an ordinary small grain mill and you're going to add to it and do things to it to make it work and fit your need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got to have some mechanical ability. You've got to have some artistic ability. And... <laughs> just just to be successful yeah yeah so i do not know much about the moonshine industry at all just gonna preface that before i even open my next line in my mouth um okay. that being said i'm gonna make a fool of myself uh, are most people that find themselves in this industry was it a family thing was it just one day hey look i can do this like the old days where would you say most makers are at in their career? It's a split. Okay. Be and, and, and I'll throw the shows back at you. Before the shows, it was a family thing. Okay. It was passed down from generation to generation. And, you know, 
I learned it from my grandfather, I learned it from his grandfather. Now there's a lot of people who go out and spend thousands of dollars buying equipment that have never done this, that have no idea, and then they try to learn. Yeah. And, and they want to call themselves a moonshiner because they own a $5,000 steel, or the worst ones are the ones that's got a two-gallon stovetop steel mm -hmm. who <laughs> talk the game like, you know, they're running a thousand gallons a week out of the woods. Right. And that's, and you see a whole lot of that on the, uh, master distiller show, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Uh, interesting. So uh, a follow up and, uh, um, the other day at the shop, someone came in and said that they've been making distilling their own stuff, but they don't know how to cut it at all. And <laughs> the, they go. haven't drank oh, in anything great. yet. Where would you Point make? Point made. Point made. Yeah, I, that was exactly. I was like, this guy was like, yeah, I haven't tried it because I don't understand the cuts and I understand that's a bad thing. So I just am kind of doing it right now. I'm like, what? What is the point of you? What? You got to do some. <laughs> yeah, that's the ones that give us the bad name. That uh, try to, you know, that are proud of the fact that hey, I can make it. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know what to do with it once I make it. But at least he's smart enough to realize that if he drinks it the way it is, it's probably going to kill him or he's going to go blind. Right. So what percentage of people would you say is that low down? It's increasing. Uh, I would say there's two out of every 10 people you talk to that really don't have a clue that just went out and bought a tabletop still. Right. And they've read, they've watched enough of the TV to figure out uh, this is how I ferment something and uh, I put it in this still and these little stovetop stills are fairly easy to run. Yeah. And they're that's where they're going. And there's you got to start somewhere. I don't want to sound you know, I wasn't born knowing everything. Mm -hmm. I started small myself, but you've got to do the research and put the time into before to learning the about the craft, how things work long before you ever start yeah. trying to distill. Yep. So there you go. Just a little bit of insight into the world of moonshining. Uh, fun stuff. Not that Papa G's doing it, but he knows people. Maybe he is, maybe he is. I don't know. We at the end of it, we don't know. So <laughs> don't subpoena us if uh, you got anything. We we have. No I'll never tell. Oh, there you go. We'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Darren, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at the Bourbon Adventures. Pappy G. TikTok, Pappy G nineteen sixty seven, and you can find me on uh, Facebook under George Rose or Ask Pappy G. All right. Uh, how about you, KK? You can find me on Instagram at KK Cast Strength. For me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, that thing's abvnetwork.com. Checking out everything that we do is out there, previous shows, blogs, so much more. abvnetwork.com. Come by and see me, the ABV Barrel Shop, the place where you can try before you buy. Check us out online. Get signed up for our email distribution at abvbarrelshop.com. Anything else to say before we get out of here, Kathy? Yes, I just want to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, just visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. Great job today, gang. Farnance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye, y'all. See ya. <laughs>
before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing, the ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.